so well, hi guys welcome back to my channel on bamji foods diy today i'll be teaching you how to make an effective dishwashing liquid that foams perfectly and can also remove oil stain perfectly this is not a normal dishwashing liquid that you buy from your nearby store this particular procedure will give you a dishwashing liquid with extra foaming power and then it will be able to also remove grease stains or use stains perfectly and remember you can also use it to wash your clothes you can use it to mop your thighs and you can use it to wash your plate that is why it's called a multi-purpose liquid soap please just like this video before you even start watching subscribe to my channel share my video to your loved ones this is the little way you can help me grow on this youtube channel thank you welcome back to the channel We'll be making use of caustic soda solution, 60 grams. I diluted 60 grams of caustic soda in about 500 ml of water. Next is our soda ash. The soda ash is 250 grams, also diluted in 500 ml of water. The third item is our SLS rice, diluted also in water. Then the next item we are going to be using is our STPP, 65 grams, also dilutes in 500 grams of water. Make sure that all your powdered items are well dissolved before production. This is Boras 30 gram, which is a neutralizer and also serves as a preservative. And then we'll also be needing our sulfonic acid. The sulfonic is already in liquid form, no need of diluting it. Then we'll be using our foam booster, one liter. A normal production would have used the 500 ml of uh, foam booster, but we are going to be using one liter. This is our nitro so That is the first item we will use. And then our texapon gel, 250 grams of texapon gel. This is our EDTA. We need about 20 grams of it. And then glycerin 10 ml and then any preservative of choice that you may want to use coloring and perfume as desired first we are going to add in our nitrosol into our water and then stir perfectly allow it to hydrate for at least 10 minutes before you start your production if you don't stir your nitrosol very well you may have lumps after your production so do well, very well to stir it perfectly nitrosol is easier to dissolve compared to antisol which you may leave for a day before it can dissolve properly and nitrosol is the thickening agent we are using for this production after dissolving your nitrosol, the next thing you should add in is your caustic soda solution. This caustic soda solution, immediately you add it into the nitrosol and stir, you actually notice that the solution will start getting thick immediately. I'm sorry that I didn't mention this. This is a 20 liters production and I started with about 15 liters. Remember, I used some part of the water to dilute all the powdered uh, ingredients we'll be using for this production. So I started with 14 to 15 liters of water for this production. The best stirrer to use is actually a PVC pipe, but I'm using a wooden uh, stick. Then you add in your soda ash. Immediately you add in your soda ash, you start noticing some white lines. Ignore and continue stirring. The more you stir, the more they dissolve. If you don't stir it very well and you continue your production, at the end of your production, you will see this white line settle on the bottom of your bucket. So stir very well and make sure that it is all well dissolved. 
if possible, take like five minutes to eight minutes to stir in everything you add. Please follow my procedure perfectly and you have a good outcome. Then your texapon gel, 250 grams of your texapon gel, you add it in. Texapon takes a little bit time before it can hydrate perfectly and become a homogeneous mixture with your liquid soap you are making. So you will really need at least 10 minutes of your time to make sure that your texapon gel dissolves perfectly. It will be breaking into lumps and be hydrating little by little, but at the end it will dissolve finally. Remember that in this method we are trying to achieve a dishwashing liquid that has a very high foaming power. What I'm adding now is the SLS solution. If you stir vigorously, you actually have foams on top of your mixing solution. I am stirring back and front and then in a clockwise um, position gently to avoid plenty foam. The next thing I added is our STPP. Once you add your STPP, you also notice that the solution may have looked a little bit thinner. But continue with your production you have a perfect outcome at the end if you stare vigorously you will have lots of foam on the surface of your production and you may have to wait very long after your STPP the next thing that you add in is your sulfonic acid adding your sulfonic acid is a liquid foam and then stir at this point if you stir a lot you have plenty foam but uh, I'm already used to this production so I know how I steer in each of my uh, chemical components to avoid having massive foam I'm using it the next on our list is our foam booster remember your foam booster measurement should be one liter instead of using 500 ml this foam booster will help to boost your foaming power so once you add it in, you stir, you stir, and you stir perfectly and make sure everything is well dissolved. For each component you add, you have to stir for at least 5 minutes to 10 minutes to avoid having lumps at the end of your production or separation. So the last thing I added now is foaming booster. We'll continue. I now added in my EDTA and my borax I blended the two together and then added it in gently and stirred. Borax will help to serve as a preservatives and also to neutralize the soap mixture. EDTA serves as a stabilizer or a binding agent. The last thing I added now was my preservatives. There are so many preservatives there in the market you can choose from. Some people add formaldehyde, formalin, sodium benzoate, etc. What I used for this production was sodium benzoate. It is easy for you to find and make use of. After adding your preservatives, you can now go in with your fragrance before your coloring. Be careful with the type of fragrance you are working with. For this 20 liters production, I'm using a total of 60 ml of my fragrance you can have a blend of two fragrance if you wish to have i divided the batches into two i added color yellow into one part and then i will also make use of another color in the second part after stirring in the color you will just let it sit and relax for at least 12 hours if you make your production in the night by morning, you should have a very good consistency and clear soap. This is some few minutes after the production. Everything is jelly and then the soap is already clearing out as you can see. Color yellow is beautiful. This is the major color that a Morning Fresh brand uses. I forgot to mention about the glycerin. The glycerin is 15 ml. I added the glycerin to the yellow part I divided and also to the green parts. 
after adding the glycerin you wash glycerin is just a hemectant it's not a must add when you are making your dishwashing soap but if you get it you can as well use it it's a humectant it draws moisture so that after wash washing with it you your hand will still be a little bit moisturized that's the work of a glycerin in liquid soap look at how the green color looks like it's, it's already clearing out and becoming better so i will let it sit till morning before i can come back to it this production will give you a very high foaming liquid soap it will foam very well it will degrease oil very well and it will wash perfectly it will also smell nice if you use the correct choice of fragrance in your production by morning you can see the difference is clear from the night production and morning by morning it has already cleared out and become transparent then at this point you can bottle your liquid soap with your packaging containers this is the green color it looks amazing it looks beautiful make sure to follow each of the steps i outlined in this procedure to have a very perfect finish like this the aim of making a dishwashing liquid is to have a dishwashing liquid that foams very well, removes oil stains, and washes perfectly. If you can be able to achieve and tick these three dots, you have a good product to sell to your neighborhood or to whoever you are selling to. Then you package with a very nice looking bottle and then you sell or you use in your house. This is the empty buckets that are after emptying it, I added water in it and then tested the foaming capacity. You can see very well how it forms and it produces large and big bubbles. This is what your customers will demand from you. Thank you for watching. Please like and share my video. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.